Hello everyone, welcome to tonight's live. I'm Hayley from Cozy Owl and this evening we're going to be joined by Abby from Make Sense Candles and we're going to be talking all about marketing ideas. So if you've got any questions about email marketing, newsletters, um, content, social media, then this is the live for you. So stick around, we're just waiting for Abby to join us now. Hi Abby, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. I am enjoying the like, yes, slightly cooler yeah. weather today. Um, and just, I know, I can't, sunshine, can't complain. It's, it's, been, it's been lovely weather. And yeah, I've, I must say, I'm actually really warm today. <laughs> I think it's just, you know, the build up of the mugginess a little bit around uh, this way. But yeah, it has been lovely. <laughs> yeah, for sure. It's kind of, it's a funny one, actually. Like, I think it's quite good for candle making because you don't get the problems with frosting and things like that but then once I actually start I then am boiling by the time I'm finished <laughs> because of having all the boilers on and everything like that so um, I'm quite interested in how everyone's finding the heat with their candle making and everything else at home um I don't know whether other people switch more to diffusers this time yeah it'd be interesting, interesting to know to yeah if you if you uh pop in the comments below just what you're making that'd be great to know <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. So, um, should we get started by introducing ourselves and how, what we do? Yes, in did you want to go marketing? first? <laughs> yeah, go on then. Um, so my name's Abby. I, if you haven't seen any of our lives before, we tend to do these once a month. Um, and we basically chat about all sorts of things, different topics. So you can go back and look on the Cozy Owl profile to see what we've talked about before. And um, quite often, um, Cozy Owl challenged me to come up with new ideas and try different products out and things like that for the first time. Um, I've been making candles through my little business called Make Sense Candles for a couple of years now. And um, uh, so I'm not too far ahead in the game, but on the marketing side of things, I'm a digital marketing manager by day. So that's where kind of my expertise, I'm not gonna say I know everything at all because I digital marketing changes all the time as I'm sure Hayley can testify in terms of social media changes and things like that, still catches us out. So, but I've um, been in marketing for over seven years now, so quite a long time doing various roles. So hopefully some of those ideas I can talk about today. That's brilliant. That's brilliant. Long -winded I've just noticed a me. couple of comments come in as well. Um, Emily in the world has said, I chickened out today because of the heat. Yes, it has been very warm. And we also have a beginner here as well, which is great to, great to see. Um, yeah, I'll give a little bit of instruction to myself as well, just so if anyone doesn't know. Um, I'm Hayley from Cozy Owl, and I'm also in the kind of world of marketing. I'm more on the content side, so I deal with all the creative content across uh, Cozy Owl. So you'll see lots of different videos, photography, uh, blog writing, new recipes, all come from me. So combined actually with, with Abby and um, we've got some good things to talk about and good subjects so this should be a good one for anyone who's either starting up or wanting to progress more within their marketing or social media. I think it's worth saying before we get started even just planning out this live today this is part two of kind of taking your hobby to a business so and we had to do part two because there's so much to talk about but again there's so much more that we could have talked about today that won't fit in um, our 20 minute half an hour live so i hope you can use some of these ideas as like prompts to go and do further research because there might be some things that uh, you're not doing at the moment some things you're doing amazingly well at and it's not for you so um hopefully we'll, we'll spark some kind of inspiration today and a few ideas um so there are a few things we talked about last time so just kind of bridging the gap between part one and part two practicalities in terms of taking things from hobby to um, small business and they were around things like insurance um, and working out your costings your RRP and that kind of thing so those things we're not really skipping over those today we're building on that and then talking about marketing so we're not kind of forgetting those key elements um, which all come into selling your product basically um, the way we structured this today is basically following following my kind of pattern um, over the last two years from from taking my small business from a hobby to um, more of an income stream I suppose as I said I'm still in my full-time job ideally 
as long as no one's not listening to mm-hmm. who works with me at the moment ideally you know that that would be a main income stream because i love working for myself that kind of thing but at the moment i have both on the go um, and obviously i have time constraints with a full-time job as i'm sure many of you do as well so there are things that i might do in my job that i cannot do for um, my small business with time and budget and all of that kind of stuff mm-hmm. so there we go there's all my caveats before i get going um first thing i want to start talking about is look and feel this might be this was my starting point basically um and i don't know whether Hayley, you can talk about cozy hours approach to this as well but the idea here is that you probably have quite a good idea of who you are as a brand without even realizing without getting into technical details you kind of know what your likes and dislikes are straight away you have an idea of maybe color schemes that you like or your aesthetics of your jars and even when you're going to the cozy hour website buying supplies you'll know whether you're going for a lucy jar that's in white or black um or karen jar i can't remember the names fully but you'll know what your kind of look is or whether it's amber or clear or something like that um or whether you're just going to do diffusers and wax melts and get creative there so you'll have some ideas to start with of what's important to you and i think looking at suppliers one of the reasons i went with cozy Owl, um was because their um ethos married up with what i intended for my small business so that was cruelty free and um, vegan products and um, eco-conscious that kind of thing so they're, they're the reasons i went with this supplier um so that is my starting point because if you think about your look and feel that feeds into everything from your choices with packaging your choices of fonts on your website everything so i think getting that right first of all is really really important no, do you want to no, say definitely i think that, hey, um the branding is what your customers will remember um so if you think of big brands like mcdonald's for instance they've got the big um giant sort of golden m you remember it so you've got to think what will my customers customers remember and also i think a great place to start is asking yourself some questions so um what am i about why have i created this business what kind of ingredients am i interested in is it soy wax or is it um more eco-friendly packaging um all of those kind of ideas i would just brainstorm if you're starting from scratch just brainstorm them all down um and really go with like you say color schemes logos and it can all be very basic you don't have to invest lots of money into this type of thing i think you can really sort of build upon your ideas but a great place to start is almost like an about page what what are you about why have you created it um and actually something that might be quite helpful to everyone that's watching um, we have our own little like cozy owl um, features page where we feature some of our customers on our blog um, and we do like a little interview just to get to know you and um, what your business is about and those questions actually on that page might be quite helpful to ask yourself and then you could write up your own answers to them and then you can kind of build your brand around that Um, If you've already built your brand and you don't quite have all of that yet, you can sort of add that in there and develop it as you go. Because as we all know, starting off a business, you you just develop over time. And as you get bigger or introduce new products, um, branding does change. And I think the look and the feel can evolve with what you're thinking and how how you want to go. So, yeah, I think um, there's a lot to think about there, but you don't have to overcomplicate things, I think you know sometimes the simpler the better Mm -hmm. but definitely ask yourself some questions and i think answering them or get someone else to ask you you know how did you start up and um yeah like you say what kind of um like containers do you use for your candles that kind of look and feel you want it to reflect yourself really and that will show across to all of your customers and your followers online as well if you're trying to sort of fit a mold of what you think your customers might like um it tends not to work it tends not to come across and um, because it's a little bit awkward to kind of shoehorn into that kind of style some brands that are really massive now have really strong tone of voice um like innocent smoothies you know if you follow them on social media you know they have like a really cheeky um way of doing things but that takes a lot of time to get right uh, and they have huge teams huge budgets all of those things but starting with your personality i think is really important basically and you'll have some gut instincts um already when you're you're choosing but i think those tips there it was so like i wish i'd had those kind of things initially i've changed 
um, labels as I've gone on. So it's not stuck in stone set in stone at all i've changed from i had feedback from customers saying they couldn't actually read some of the labels they were in a handwriting font um more um, elderly customers couldn't really read it i was so used to seeing it on instagram all the time and that kind of modern style but i didn't really think about it being legible um so that's something i've sh moved away from but that's something that you'll learn along the way so i wouldn't that's get too hung up on a it. really like, good exactly piece of advice content. like customer feedback um, ask your customers things um that's a really really good piece of information really to take from that as well because then as you like you say you can evolve from that nothing is like you have to be a certain way but when you get feedback like that you can change it as and when i see a lot of people um on facebook groups community groups that do get a bit stuck in the research stage they get very hung up on the testing which is really important but i think the fear takes over of actually launching um so it's worth just having a few trusted people that you can sit down test different things out um keep in mind that anything scented is quite difficult to sell online um but it's also very down, much down to personal perception everyone can have a different sense of smell um, so those sorts of things you want to take with a pinch of salt and and keep asking people what they think and try things in different spaces as well so it's kind of i guess tie in your audience feedback with your um testing process really and as you go along it will just grow and grow right website so we're talking about customers um but if you don't have any customers because you're just starting out you've got to go and find some basically and so through all these kind of tips we'll be talking about how to find customers but you kind of got to decide where you want to actually sell your candles um or wax melts or diffusers or soaps any kind of products basically once you're all kind of set up in terms of a regulatory um side of things so there are a few options you could go down the route of craft markets um going into the retail spaces in your local area if that's something that's quite important to your brand that you're the fact that you're local you might want to go into farm shops or spas and, and beauty therapy places um, and see if they'll stock your items on a trial basis um, or you could look at online or both so there are a few different sites like Etsy um, and not on the high street and a lot of people say about the fees with these sites um, you could also have your own website as well um, the thing that I've found out lately, and I would say use it as a prompt and then go and do your own research as well, is that when you're actually tracking your income and expenditure, um, which you would do after you started selling and making a profit, you can actually claim back the fees that these sites charge um, as an expense. So that's something to look into that I'm starting to shift into becoming VAT registered. So I'm going to the next level now. That might be something that's only available for that point but i would have a research into that because i know that comes up a lot with people saying oh but they charge transaction fees and i don't want to put on my prices to counteract that and put customers off that kind of thing so have a look at that as a tip that's something i've only come across very recently and wish i knew um and then if you were going to set up your own website you might want to look at suppliers like squarespace or shopify um and then they're really quite straightforward for setting up yourself. Um, they, there's pros and cons with setting up your own website because you've got to do a lot of, create a lot of content and put a lot of work into it to get a decent site with it that's easy for people to buy products from. And something like Etsy is where I started because um, the steps were very straightforward to follow and then it had an instant um, audience base already where you can follow a few steps and you will be found during the search terms um, for your different products. So that's the way I went until I actually started selling and hit a certain number of sales on Etsy. Um, that's where I got to before basically investing in my own website, which was a monthly cost and a few other steps involved in that one. Um, yeah, it's quite different for you guys because you've obviously got a web team i'm assuming and yeah, like that. yeah so it's a yeah, bit but that's really interesting to hear business, your sort of progress from etsy into your own store i'm sure a lot of people that are following us and are watching along have done similar things um let us know in the comments if you um have a certain platform that you use and um you know what you'd recommend as well because it's great to share amongst one another you know all the tips and tricks as well um but yeah it is slightly different obviously our, our side of it um 
being sort of more of the wholesale side um we do a lot of different content on there so rather than sort of like a etsy side which is is a great place to start because you do have all of the tools there ready for you so you can sort of upload your photos it kind of gives you a bit more of a step by step um whereas obviously making your own website you are branding it more as your own rather than selling on etsy um so those those are other things to think about and that will come with the look and feel like we spoke about just before then as well um so yeah there's a lot of things to think about um but no that's really helpful information you've just uh, just given as i've learned a bit there as well <laughs> i'm trying it's hard because i only sell for example in the uk so that's quite difficult having an online site because i am i do get a lot of visitors from outside the uk and they probably get to the checkout and then realize there isn't an option for delivery and that is a choice because there's a lot of other steps to selling um, in Europe, especially now after Brexit and internationally with um, different rules in the US and things like that around candles, which is my main, the main product I sell. So that's more of a me shying away from ad, admin and also for extra admin. And um, because also things would have to then be flown to places and it's quite difficult to ensure that products arrive safely in different places. So that's my only kind of a caveat with our website yeah definitely as well um should we move over to social media and content um so i've got yeah. lots of different things to say on this so i'll start off with what works for us as cozy owl and um, so we have we are on quite a few different social media platforms as you probably know and um, so we're obviously on instagram uh, facebook youtube tiktok and pinterest they're all very different platforms. You haven't got to be on every single one. Um, I'd say choose a select few that suit your brand. Um, TikTok is very up there at the moment. A lot of people are on TikTok. Um, it's definitely a good place if you are wanting to start video editing because you've got kind of like editing tools on there for you to start using. Um, and they're very basic so that's a good one if you are looking more at wanting to do short form videos um, they have introduced a bit more long form on there as well um, but if you're just sort of starting out and you're not too sure what to do I definitely would recommend doing something like TikTok where you can do just a few short videos they can be like 10 seconds long um, just to get into it and find out what, what kind of niche you can get into within that um, and I'd recommend looking at a lot of hashtags as well. So um, across TikTok and Instagram in particular, a lot of people have hashtags which you might be interested in. So if you are within the candle making business, have a little type in of like candle making, candle making behind the scenes, um, fragrance oils, things like that. And maybe have a look at see, have a look and see what other people are doing um, and get some like, inspiration around sort of what others are doing and how how well they're working um but sorry with tiktok sorry Haley, just to jump in the thing that i think we try and do on every other social media platform is to be unique and do something that's a unique offering and and kind of thing like that whereas tiktok it's all about getting on the same trend and almost basically copying Definitely, the yeah. format of other videos um to jump on a trend so it's quite a different approach you have to kind of forget what you already know but you can look, just sign up and you don't have to post anything yeah literally. yeah it's a great idea and, and like i say yeah every platform is very different doesn't mean that you can't use everything across like definitely um reuse content where you can that's it's fine to post across see what works like some um content from tiktok might not quite work on instagram always but you can kind of test your audience out see see what works and what doesn't work um some content ideas for people starting out or a bit worried about what to start with you could do simple things like behind the scenes so whether you want your face in it or not it doesn't matter too much you could just show maybe a time lapse of you packing up orders or making a product behind the scenes showing what goes into your candles for instance um 
meet the maker so if you do want to try and introduce your face a bit more or your voice because you can do quite a lot of voice recordings on videos and things then that's quite a good way of just introducing yourself and introducing your brand and what you're about it's a bit more sort of personal um and a day in the life as well so whether i know that most people that have small businesses we all wear many small hats many small hats <laughs> many hats <laughs> um so um, you could show the whole process of your day from um, seeing your first orders of the day, packing orders, making orders, things like that. People love to see what's going on behind your business. So I think definitely there are a few good ideas as well. Um, if you've got like a soap making product, for instance, you might want to show how to use the product. Is it a shampoo bar that you put in your hair? what kind of benefits do the products have have you got a certain essential oil in there have you got um a carrier oil like coconut oil is it moisturizing things like that um so yeah really show what your business is about and don't forget to show the funny moments things that go on behind the scenes and that doesn't have to be posted directly on your feed but you could post it in the stories and um, people want to see the real you as well so um, showing that off will sort of resonate with your customers and your followers um, so they're just like a few ideas I don't know whether you have any ideas as well Abby that you wanted to share at all yeah I just wanted to talk about that like I as much as we do these lives I don't really like following my own advice and putting my face on camera and things like that um, I psych myself out <laughs> with competition I compare myself too much to other people so I know other people kind of be like oh I'm not sure about putting my face out there but putting your voice out there telling people about what you're doing just being authentic is is really really important um because you're so much of the brand as well I mean going back to that look and feel at the beginning it's very much you being part of that and you're the person who creates these products I think the only thing I will say on content is, and it's something that I fall into the trap of quite a lot, is focusing too much on the product itself um, and also assuming knowledge. So assuming that, oh, I've, I posted this three weeks ago, everyone on my feed's already seen this, so they don't want to see it again. And it's just not true because with the algorithms, people don't see stuff. People are doing other things rather than just looking at your own brand. Like, so there's other things out there as well. And um, so you can absolutely repurpose put things on different platforms if something doesn't perform or glitches out on tiktok i then repost it a couple of weeks later the same for instagram reels because sometimes something goes wrong uh, and suddenly you've only got like a couple of views or something so you know something's not right and um, plus you're putting in so much time into this content so you want to make sure that it it does reach people um but i think going back to basics like you said saying about what you're actually about and just keeping reminding people because some people will join you at different points they won't necessarily follow you from the beginning. So talking about your values and things like that. And, and just talking about one idea per piece of content. Um, so you don't want to overcomplicate things by basically talking about your subscription deal or your, um, your values and your sustainability and all sorts of things all in one tiny video because it's too much for people's take in. And people just have a really short attention span. Um, so I think with content, I think most people think about content in terms of that's what marketing is to a lot of people. It's social media and it's content. Um, I've completely gone blank now talking of showing <laughs> <laughs> other things going wrong. Um, what was I going to say on that one? <laughs> I have no idea now. <laughs> Don't worry. It wasn't obviously that important. I'll come back to it if I remember it. <laughs> so it's all good. Um, Collaborations and partnerships. This is basically what we're doing right now in a nutshell. Um, Cozy Owl, way back when, did a feature looking for small businesses to do, do content with them, basically. Um, now you guys are doing small business features um, on blog posts, as you were saying, Hayley. So those are really important, like, ways that you can benefit from using getting featured on someone else's website which if you have your own website is really beneficial uh, and it builds sort of trust in terms of google's perception of your website um, it also helps you build on other people's audiences as well so cozy owl has many more followers than i do so it's a chance to reach more people 
um, who won't necessarily, in all this kind of stuff, um, purchase a product. But what we're doing is we're getting the brand out. We're adding value by giving people tips today um, on how to start their own company. And then that kind of messaging creeps through. Um, but it can be really beneficial. And these, these collaborations could even be the markets that you sell at, the small shops that you sell at as well. And um, lots of people have their own business Instagrams and social media. So you can kind of benefit in two way street. You guys do a lot of stuff with different um, like YouTubers, different kind of content creators for different voices. So how does that work for you guys? Definitely, you I think um, working with other people, I think you bounce a lot of ideas off of one, one another. Um, it's also great to just partner with one another, network, gain some contacts. Um, you could do giveaways with one another as well. Um, and yeah, you can send out products to test to different influencers and things like that as well. But sometimes you've got to bear in mind that some people will charge for different things if they're content creators themselves, because that is their job. Um, but we collaborate like yourself um, and as you say it adds more value and also I gain a lot of ideas from myself as well talking to you um, so it is really important to get out there and speak to as many people as you can people that are like yourself in your own business um, and also other people who might be just within the craft industry in general um, because you might be able to collaborate them at a market or something like that um, but yes, definitely working with other people can help um, introduce more faces to your business as well. Um, if you are sort of a one man band, which a lot of us are for small businesses, it's just nice to just see, add, add another face and have a chat and yeah, just get to know one another. Um, and you can do that quite a lot through online platforms, which is another great thing about um, social media. You can meet a lot of businesses and um, create a lot of groups as well. I know that um, during COVID, um, <laughs> way back then, um, there was a lot of like online marketplaces and I joined quite a lot of those actually, just to see, it was almost like a live like, like we're doing now. And I gained a lot of different contacts in um, lots of different craft areas and thinking, oh, I could use them for Christmas, I could use this. And I think um, it's really important to definitely collaborate with people um we've collaborated with people on our youtube so if you head over to our youtube channel you can see that we have victoria and michelle on there and they specialize in soap and candle making so it's really nice to just show um another business on there and showing how how they work and their own tips as well and um, so you're getting a lot of different personalities sort of in one as well yeah definitely I would say focus on collaboration rather than yeah. competition with one another because I think you can get too hung up on being a one-man band and also thinking you're the only one doing something whereas actually if you think about collaborating or just seek out people for advice who are maybe only a couple of steps ahead of you I've talked about this before that it's really good to see that and I kind of come back to it a lot and, and make sure everyone knows that I'm not very far ahead in this um, I do still make mistakes because I'm looking at the people who are Forbes 30 under 30 who started the same time as me and I get myself psyched out and think hmm how did that happen to them and not me and you know and I go down in a spiral and then I forget actually I need to yeah. concentrate on my own stuff and <laughs> work on my content rather than worry about competition things like that that, that doesn't really exist because there is space for for lots of people out there um Okay, two things, just checking on time, we are <laughs> a little bit tight on time, I knew we would be today, <laughs> partly because I talk, so and I. I just find all this <laughs> stuff really interesting, anyway. <laughs> and I love chatting to you guys for lots of ideas as well, because I'm trying to scribble notes. Um, email marketing and PR. So, because people tend to think about social media as the marketing thing, they forget that other things exist like website, like writing blogs, um, which can answer various questions and bring people into your site that way. Um, like you were saying earlier, Hayley as well. Um, but email marketing, like creating um, a list, you don't have to do, don't have to just do like say a giveaway on social media with the aim of say getting more followers or getting more engagement on your post. You could um, 
incentivize is the wrong word because of GDPR permissions, but encourage people to um, sign up to your mailing list or just do that in your general content. And if you create a list of um, people that you can send emails to via MailChimp or other platforms, um, you can basically start to build up uh, another pool of people who are going to see um, behave slightly slightly differently and interact slightly differently with your content so you can tell them things that are a bit more long long form you can set, send people to your website via your emails um and i would say just, just the way to get started with that obviously you can put links on your social media or whatever kind of platforms are working for you at the moment to get people to sign up have pop-ups on your website to encourage people perhaps they could get 10 percent off their first order by filling in their email address for you um but you just need that in a platform that's nice and secure because you need to have permissions. So I'm not going to explain GDPR right now, but you basically don't want to be contacted by people that have just randomly added your email to their list. So you, I think with all of this stuff, and I think this is the thing I'd forgotten about earlier, put yourself in the customer's shoes, what you like on social media, uh, what you like in terms of emails. Um, it's probably going to be quite similar to other customers. So don't get too like distant from who your custom, customer is. Um, so something that I've set up recently with email marketing is some automations because platforms help me do a step by step on that. So it's really straightforward. And I make sure I have a welcome email. I then have a few days later an about us email. And then um, I would follow up with some other kind of promotion. And then when it comes to someone's birthday, because they filled that in when they signed up, they'd get a little treat. So it's something that's a little bit personal. Um, but you can sort of develop that as a whole thing, do some research into email marketing, but it's kind of something that's forgotten, but I think is really beneficial. But you guys have a lot of your content that also, uh, like recipes and things like that, that come across slightly different things into your email marketing. Do you find it like is really Definitely. beneficial to have both? You've got to think about, um, like we said before, adding value compared to sales as well. So you want to incorporate both into what you're doing um so when you're right like for instance when i'm writing up recipes it's just showing how you could create different products um in an instance if you're a candle making business so you're not necessarily giving out recipes but you could again um talk about the benefits of your candles or even simple things of how to care for your candle there's a lot of information that you can give to your customers that are really helpful for them and um, i remember when i first started at cozy owl um, I didn't didn't know as much about candles as I, as I do now at all. I never used to trim my candle wick. <laughs> when I, I never even knew about it. But once I started at Cozy Owl, obviously that was one of the first things I learned. Um, but things like that, things that your customers might not know about um, because you've experimented and tested it, they might want to know. So different information, tips, things like that are really handy to put into emails as well. There's a question here, which I'll just answer because I know we have time. Um, is there anything that either of you have tried that didn't work, but you gained something from uh, in the end? And what was that? Um, something that I made a mistake or I'm not sure is the right word, but something that kind of went wrong for me was with the collaboration route. I bought in a lot of, I negotiated a discount with different sellers that were like me, um, small businesses. And I, um, bought a lot of their stock up front to sell as like a collaboration box uh, gift box i did not have the audience size to make that work uh, and didn't sort of talk to any of the collaborators in terms of like shared promotion of said box um and because i paid for those items up front uh when they didn't sell as well as i thought i was left fronting that cost so i would say there's different ways you can approach collaboration that I would do now uh, and not with that upfront cost um, so that is something that I learned I've also had many uh, spillages on Instagram lives and workshops <laughs> that hope you will testify <laughs> and mind blanks and all sorts of things like that that I would you know no, no that's that's really interesting <laughs> to know about that I'm trying to think about anything uh, over <laughs> no, I was trying to think You're of it, trying it didn't work. You gave it from it. <laughs> I would say more on the side of testing. Um yeah, testing out different things. I've tried lots of different ways um just to see what what works and what doesn't work. But gaining from that, I've learned a lot about 
you know, things, for instance, when we were putting um, like candles into fridges to see how cold they could get and see how it affects them, you kind of get to know what temperatures you need for a wax, for instance. So pushing the ingredients to another level to see what it does. So I think, yeah, that's something that's, that I've tried. hasn't always worked, but I've always made notes down. So I note down everything that doesn't work. That's just as valuable as things that do work. If you write that down, you will learn a lot from it. Mm. And then, yeah, then you gain a better product out of it because you know what doesn't work. Um, that would be my main thing, I think. Yeah, that's really good. That was a really good question. Oh, really made me think. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Okay, the last thing I will talk about is PR. And it's more kind of just because, as I said at the beginning of the slide, if anyone's still with us from the beginning or re-watching this back, these are things I've approached in chronological order so now I'm starting to think about PR and the reason for this is because I have returning customers so I know that my products sit well with individual customers um, people come back to me again um, but the th thing that I can't do as, as quickly and as well is reach new customers um, algorithms on social media don't help me with that um, and as I said I don't have a huge amount of time to create content and do as much as I do in my day job, which is 35 hours a week on marketing for something else with much bigger budgets and other people to help me. Um, so I would say just in terms of PR, the things I'm noticing at the moment is a lot of clickbait, social media adverts around that kind of thing. Um, do your research. There are certain things that people should charge for in terms of PR and there are certain things they shouldn't. Um, so I think just be careful you don't fall into too many traps there of kind of promises of that people will make um there are a few other costs that i've had to stump up recently to go down this pr route which is cut out photography so having no background or white background on my products so um think of amazon when you're scrolling through that all of their products look exactly the same um very boring you would never do it on social media but they're for that basically so cut out photography so that people can do collages in magazines in print and online um high res photography so this is where i've had to go to a professional photographer because my phone won't cut it um and hayley i know you use like high-tech cameras for your photography definitely, so that's um, that you do definitely for pr side of it for general social media and other things phone is perfectly fine just just get started don't worry about that about it too much but but yeah for pr definitely high res imagery is what they'll ask for straight away yeah um and i think just as you're growing generally something i've learned lately is that um some things i'm not quite ready for yet and some things you've got to think about to be ready for it so if you were thinking of moving from selling in markets you have you maybe give something away in a paper bag and then online you've got to make sure it goes through the post and you wouldn't have a paper bag so there's things like that that keep coming up for me uh, in the kind of development of my brand and the marketing side of things that i have to keep thinking about so yes it's more of a a note like a ps note no, about lovely. PR there. but yeah i think loads, we've covered loads. yeah we've covered loads. <laughs> if anyone has any more questions just feel free to pop them at the end of this live and we'll get back to you as soon as we can but yeah we could probably talk about this for hours on end <laughs> yes we definitely could um but i hope someone you know any of you listening or re-watching this back that you've got some kind of ideas to get started and yeah a few basics so just start with look and feel definitely. and what you're about first of all i think everything else will come from that and you can do your individual research into different areas but we can't <laughs> teach you how to be an marketer <laughs> in half an hour because that's people's whole jobs you know but you can get advice from different people um use the community groups as well that we've talked about so the cozy yeah, definitely Facebook group is very useful well thank you very much abby for joining us tonight and uh yeah hopefully we'll, yeah, we'll see you on the next live that's coming up in a couple of weeks so yeah lovely yeah fab. thank you i will see you then thank you, you everyone see you later. for watching as well bye thanks Haley. bye